For the seventh proposition of Book 2 of Euclid's Elements, if a straight line be cut at random, the square on the whole and that on one of the segments, both together are equal to twice the rectangle contained by the whole and the said segment and the square on the remaining segment. So basically with this problem, we have some line which we cut at random at this point C and our goal is to prove that if we take the square on the whole line, so the square formed by the line AB, and we add that to the square formed by one of the segments, then that will be equal to twice the rectangle formed between the whole and whatever that segment was we picked. And then we'd have to add to that the square on the other segment. And if you want to think about this in a more algebraic way, you can call this A and this B. And then what we're trying to prove is that if we take the square on the whole, so that's A plus B squared, and we add to that the square on this section here, which is just B squared, then this is equal to twice the rectangle contained by the line AB and BC. So that would be A plus B for the line AB and then times by little b for the line BC. And we'd have to add to this the square on AC, which would just be A squared. So to start this proof, let's first start by creating a square using the whole line AB. So the line AB will essentially be the base of our square, and we can label this as E and this point over here is point D. So we just constructed the square A, B, E, D using book one, proposition number 46. Now from here, what we wanna do is connect the points D and B, and then through this point C, we wanna construct a line that's parallel to the line B, E. So this line, which we can call CN, is parallel to the line BE. So CN and BE are parallel to each other. And this comes from book one, proposition number 31. And we wanna again, through this point now, which we can call point G. So through point G, we wanna construct a line that's parallel to the line AB. And this line, HF, is parallel to the line AB. So HF is parallel to AB. And now that we have our figure drawn, let's take a closer look at some of these parallelograms. Namely, this one here, AG, and this one here, GE. So I claim that these are equal to each other. So the parallelogram AG is equal to the parallelogram GE. And this is true because of book one, proposition number 43, which basically says that if we have this parallelogram here, or a square in our case, and we have this diameter, then the parallelograms about the diameter are always gonna be equal to each other. And with this result, what we can do is use common notion number two, and we can add to both of these parallelograms this square CF. So we're adding the square CF to each side of this equation. And AG plus CF will now essentially be this new parallelogram, which we can call AF. So the parallelogram AF is equal to GE plus CF, which is another new parallelogram, which we can call CE. So the parallelogram AF is equal to the parallelogram CE. And if both of these are equal to each other, then we can essentially add to each side of this equation the parallelogram AF. So that on the left-hand side, we just have twice the parallelogram AF, 
And on the right hand side, we'd have this parallelogram CE plus the parallelogram AF. And the reason that I wrote this out in this particular way is so that we can take a closer look at this right hand side. So we have this CE plus this AF. So what you can notice is you're essentially counting this region here twice. So we'd have this entire region here plus this square in the middle again. But this entire region here, these three parallelograms connected together, this is called the gnomon. And we can actually label this in such a way. So the gnomon we can call K L M. So this right hand side here, so we still have twice the parallelogram AF. But this right hand side is now essentially this gnomon plus this square up here, CF. So I'll just write this as the gnomon K L M plus the square CF. And the reason I did this was because now we can use common notion number two and add to each side of this equation this square here, HN. So we're adding the square HN to both sides of this equation here. And when we add HN to this gnomon, so the gnomon is already all of this, but now we're adding essentially the final piece of this big square. So on the right hand side, adding this HN to the gnomon will give us just this entire square, which is just the square on the line AB. So let me rewrite everything down below. So twice the parallelogram AF, and we're adding to this the square HN, and this is equal to this gnomon KLM plus this square, which like I said, is just the square on the line AB. So we can say the square contained by the line AB, and we're still adding the square CF at the end, but CF, you can notice, is just the square formed by the line BC or it's the square contained by the line BC. And this equation here is essentially the end of the proof since you have up here this left hand side of the equation the square on AB plus the square on BC and you can notice that that is just the right hand side of what we have. So all we have to do is show that this right here is equal to this right here. And this square HN, let's take a closer look at that. So that's this square here. And this length here, this AC would have to be equal to HG here because opposite sides in parallelograms are equal. So AC is equal to HG, but we know that this is a square so this would have to be the square formed by the line AC. So let's write that down, that HN, this square, is really just the square contained by the line AC. And now all we have to do is look at this rectangle AF. So AF is this rectangle here, and this is the rectangle formed by the line AB and BF. But since this right here is a square, we know that BF and BC are equal. So this rectangle AF is really formed by the lines AB and BC. So we can write that down. That the rectangle AF is contained by the lines AB and BC. So relooking at this left hand side of the equation here, twice the rectangle AF, but AF is composed of this AB and BC. These are the two lines that contain the rectangle. 
But you can see that we have this here in the statement we're trying to prove. And we're adding to this the square on AC, but that's just this square here, HN, since HN is equal to the square on AC. So we have all of the components that we need to complete this proof. And we can finish with QED.